brothers and sisters in Christ, we are now in the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, Singapore, and so let us begin.
prayers for forgiveness and healing before the Blessed Sacrament. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are before our Lord who is present to us in the Blessed Sacrament, truly and physically, after each prayer, let us allow the words to sink into our hearts. Heavenly Father, I come before you with an open heart to receive your graces, to forgive those who have hurt me deeply. May you heal me and give me the strength to be more like you at all times. Forgive me for the times when I have taken your love and mercy for granted. Father, you know my needs and you feel my pain, trials and helplessness. Be my strength and my hope, so that I can forgive as you forgive, and find the peace of seeing and loving you in every person daily. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us begin with our guided contemplation of the Gospels. To familiarize with the Gospel text of our contemplation, I will now read the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verses 26 to chapter 16, verse 4, in which Jesus proclaims, The Spirit of Truth will be my witness. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, 
who issues from the Father, he will be my witness. And you too will be witnesses because you have been with me from the outset. I have told you all this that your faith may not be shaken. They will expel you from the synagogues and indeed the hour is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty of God. They will do these things because they have never known either the Father or myself. But I have told you all this so that when the time for it comes, you may remember that I have told you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I will now highlight a few aspects of the Gospel that we just heard proclaimed to help us have a better understanding and appreciation of God's Word and also to prepare our hearts for our guided contemplation prayer. In today's Gospel of St. John, Jesus reminds his disciples that they will surely be persecuted for their faith and be expelled from the synagogues. Indeed, this is precisely what Jesus himself would also suffer and eventually die for the gospel of salvation that he proclaims. However, Jesus assures his disciples that he will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, from his Father to them, to give them the wisdom to proclaim the gospel with courage and clarity and with strength and fidelity. Through the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the disciples will witness to the truth of the gospel that as Jesus willingly dies for the sake and salvation of all peoples, so too the disciples who has been with him would willingly follow the path of persecution that Jesus himself has taken. When we reflect on our lives and how we live our faith, you and I are called to remember that the Advocate that gave the disciples the clarity, courage and fidelity in witnessing to the Gospel of Christ is also the same Advocate and Holy Spirit that we receive at our confirmation and who is present within our hearts. How open and in tune are we to this Advocate and how deep are our desires to receive her light, strength and love to live and carry the crosses of following Jesus' gospel with fidelity. When trials and temptations and tribulation come our way of living the faith, do we plead with God to give us the strength to be faithful to Jesus and his gospel of salvation? Or do we give in and turn away from God because of our own self-protective cares and fears of pain and trials? My brothers and sisters in Christ, before we enter into the guided contemplation proper, I urge you to switch off your mobile phone and set up a conducive ambience for your prayer. Please also note, as I guide you along during the contemplation, follow me only if you find that what I say to be helpful to your prayer. But if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in some personal way that is different from mine, then simply ignore what I am saying. Please note too that there will be moments of silence which are deliberate. These moments are very important parts of the contemplation. They are to give you the sacred space to listen to and feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit, however this may be. And if you wish to have more details of the structure of this guided contemplation and also to listen to the introduction of this series, please click 
on the link at the bottom of this page of this video. And so my sisters and brothers in Christ, having prepared ourselves to familiarize with the gospel text that we are to contemplate on, we can now begin our contemplation. Let us begin by composing ourselves. Switch off your mobile phones, close your eyes and sit upright. Focus your attention on your nostrils. Become aware of your breathing. The air that is entering your nostrils and giving you life. Every breath you take is God's precious gift of life to you. Be grateful to God for the gift of life. God is present within your heart and is loving you personally and intimately. Thank the Lord. Prayer to pray for the graces we need for our contemplation. Heavenly Father, we pray that during this contemplation, you would give us the grace to open our minds and hearts to your Advocate, to renew our faith and deepen our love for you, so that we can follow Jesus more closely and more faithfully. Imagine yourself at the scene where you are with Jesus and his disciples. You are seated together after your breakfast and preparing to leave the house to go to town to get some provision for your meals. Before you left with the disciples, Jesus calls all of you to gather around. When Jesus does this, all of you know that he has some very important message for you. So all of you quickly gather around Jesus in silence.
Jesus says, when they have put me to death, they too will persecute you as you are my disciples. They will expel you from the synagogues. And when they kill you, they will think that they are doing a holy duty of God. For they have never known either the Father or myself. There is a great silence among all of you while your hearts feel the great courage to remain faithful in your love for Jesus. At the same time, there is the fear that you would not have the courage and strength to remain faithful to Jesus. For you know your own weaknesses. Jesus, knowing what you are feeling, then assures you all, Do not worry. I will send you the Advocate from my Father to you all. This is the Spirit that will give you the truth and the strength to remain faithful to me in your witness.
you feel the consolation of Jesus' words of assurance and you pray in your heart. As you look at Jesus, who is also looking at you and knows what you are feeling, you say to Jesus from your heart, Lord, I trust in you. I love you. And I believe that you will never fail us when our faith is tested. Jesus then adds, I have told you all this, that your faith may not be shaken, so that when the time come, you may remember that I have told you. You then look into your heart and recognize the times in your experiences where your faith is being tested. And how it is truly the strength and light of the Holy Spirit that kept you faithful in your love for Jesus. And you thank Jesus for everything. Become conscious that you are in your room where you are praying. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may open your eyes now. My brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Ignatius of Loyola reminds us that soon after our contemplative prayer, 
we are to do a review of our prayer experiences. This review only takes some five minutes or so. The purpose of this review of prayer is to recall and relish what happened during the prayer. Get in touch with your inner feelings during the contemplation and describe your experiences. As such, click the pause button now, close your eyes and spend the next few minutes making a review of your contemplation prayer. My brothers and sisters in Christ, just before we end, may I bring your attention again to those of you who are not yet familiar with this guided contemplation form of prayer and would like to have a greater clarity of the meaning and steps of how to pray this form of prayer. If so, then please click the link below this video for the details. I strongly believe that if you keep trying to pray this guided contemplation prayer, you would soon be familiar with it and will reap the fruits of the Spirit that will lead you to encounter Jesus in a very personal way through the contemplation. Take one patient step at a time and God will soon provide you with beautiful and profound experience of Him in ways that you have never experienced before. We shall now move on to the next part of our session, which is the benediction. Have given them bread from heaven. Having in itself all delight. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament left us a memorial of your passion, we ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption, you who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, in our last session, we reflected on the question, how do I see myself? In that session, we suggested some very important exercises that we could do to help us live a more discerning life. Hope you were able to find some time to do it. The first point we suggested was for us to get in touch with our present inner feelings. For this, we need to compose ourselves and calm down. The second point we suggested was that we describe our inner feelings and record them in your spiritual diary. You could describe your inner feelings as, for example, I am feeling very anxious or say very upset or fearful or irritable with someone or I am feeling very joyous, grateful or blessed. Third, we suggested that you bring your inner feelings to God and ask the Holy Spirit to open your mind to God's truth of what is happening to you in your present life. This exercise need not take long. You may even begin with five minutes and then, in later exercise, extend to 10 minutes or so as you feel comfortable. The important thing is to get into the habit daily or frequent routine of doing this. You will then reap the fruits of finding ourselves being more in touch with our deeper self and thus having a better sense of what is happening within us. From these three steps, we then invited you to repeat the exercise as you find them to be helpful and necessary. If you were to make this exercise more frequently, as in your physical exercise, you would become more comfortable with making it. Likewise, the more often we get in touch with our inner feelings and then take note of them, and more importantly, present them to our Lord, the more familiar we are going to be with getting in touch with our inner feelings and with God in our lives. As such, in our last session, we were encouraged to surrender our inner feelings to the Lord and ask Him, Lord, send your Spirit to open my mind to your truth of what is happening to my present life. And the more open and sincere we are to God's promptings and graces, the more we will be able to sense God's workings within our hearts. My sisters and brothers in Christ, I cannot overemphasize how important it is that you and I get in touch with our inner feelings, whatever they may be. Whether we are upset, impatient, jealous, angry, happy, or excited, and then being more aware of them, we are then to bring them and surrender them to our Lord and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us what is happening to us. Otherwise, what can happen is that we may be repressing and suppressing our emotions, and in the end, one day, they may get too much and too hot for us that our emotions explode. And when that happens, this can create irreparable damage to our lives or in our relationships with people we love. Take for example, say Jackie being under a lot of pressure to meet certain targets and expectations of her boss at work who is treating her very unreasonably, piling more and more work on her, the more she is able to achieve, but without increasing her salary. 
Moreover, they are blaming her for what she has not done wrong and even threatening to replace or retrench her with someone else he likes. Jackie is so stressed at work and works till midnight and then have to get to work by 7 a.m. the next day. She wants to give up. But she cannot afford to do this as being a single parent, she has three children to care for. And her mother, who lives with her, is weak and elderly and can no longer see to the children's needs. The maid has just informed Jackie that she wants to leave as her children and mother are not very easy to take care of. Jackie is desperate and has no one else to turn to. My sisters and brothers in Christ, Jackie's situation is very complex and has no easy solution. Jackie is clearly very stressed at work and filled with great anxieties of what is happening at home with her children, her mother, her maid and her financial situation. How then does Jackie live a more discerning life? One of the first important points that Jackie should take note of are her inner feelings. If she is not careful, she may be repressing all her emotions at work and with her grave concern in the home, she is emotionally drained daily. If Jackie does not first get in touch with her inner feelings and then also try to identify what is going on with her, her emotions may one day explode in the home and or in the office or she may sadly even unload her pent-up emotions on her children. All Jackie needs is a spark to trigger off the emotional explosion. And if that should happen, then the consequences may likely cause regret and guilt for the disproportionate outbursts of emotions like shouting at her boss and sending in her resignation letter or screaming at her maid or mother or children and the like. But before such an explosion of emotion happen, Jackie or those of us who are in such a painful and complex situation in our lives are strongly advised to really get in touch with our inner feelings and then try to identify them and calm and compose ourselves and then bring them to the Lord to seek His strength and to see through such painful challenges in our life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this proposal for us to get in touch with our inner feelings is not only when we are going through complex and overwhelming challenges like Jackie. Getting in touch with our inner feelings is to gauge what is happening within us, physically, emotionally or spiritually. This gauge will give us indications of how we can make the right decisions of doing the right thing for ourselves, whether physically, emotionally and or spiritually. One important basis of trying to discern God's will in our lives is to pay particular attention to and be in tune with our physical, emotional and spiritual feelings. If we pay particular attention to our inner self, we could say that at any point in time, there may be different inner feelings of either physical, emotional or spiritual. However, at certain times, one of these feelings 
may be stronger than others. For example, when we are feeling very hungry physically or hurt emotionally or experiencing God very close to us and we are filled with great joy or God being very distant and disconnected and our relationship with Him seems empty and meaningless. If our inner feelings tell us that we are feeling physically tired, hungry, sleepy, body aches, or having a fever or feeling giddy and the like, then the first obvious response for us is physical. We could have a rest or go to sleep if we are physically very tired or eat something if we are very hungry and the like. But if our strong and dominant inner feelings are emotional, like that of Jackie, then the first needed response should be on the level of emotions. This could be to get in touch with our emotions and then ask ourselves, what is happening to me? Why am I feeling so upset with my children or parent or maid? Earlier, we suggested that we could then surrender our emotional feelings to God, our Lord, and seek His light, love and strength. However, let us also not forget that as in the case of Jackie, even as she may be very upset with either her boss or children or mother, at a particular moment in time, it is important to note that our deep emotional feelings towards someone may not necessarily mean that the person is the cause of our emotions. For example, Jackie may be very upset with her children for not doing their schoolwork or for them not keeping their rooms tidy. However, it is possible that the real primary cause of her being upset and angry with them could have come from her pressure and great anxieties at work. So her children have not done their schoolwork was only a trigger of her outburst and not the primary cause. It is therefore helpful for Jackie to compose herself and calm down and get in touch with her inner feelings before reacting and getting upset with her children. My sisters and brothers in Christ, in real life situation, Jackie's situation could even be more complex. For example, she could have found out that one of her colleagues whom she has come to specially like very much has just met with an accident. Life could even be more cruel if, say, Jackie, upon returning home, received a phone call from her, her doctor friend that she is having terminal cancer. The reality of life can pose very painful challenges that are beyond our human capacity and emotional strength to manage. And you and I know that such cruel and painful realities can happen to any one of us or any person. My sisters and brothers in Christ, you and I and everyone experience life very differently. We each have different forms of pain, trials, joys, hopes and fulfillment in our life. While Jackie may be going through very trying times that are threatening and depressive, let us remember that Jackie is never alone. Let us remember our true story of Jasmine of our part 6 and 7 of our series who shared similar, if not a worse situation than Jackie, as God was always present to Jasmine 
throughout her 25 years of carrying the heavy crosses of living with her mother-in-law, this same God is also present to Jackie and to all of us in our trials and tribulations of our lives. To live a more discerning life, Jackie, as with Jasmine, would have to dive deeper into the reality of themselves in order to discover the presence of God. This is the spiritual level of the reality of each human person. Jackie, Jasmine, and all of us have to get in touch with God who is present to us at the deepest reality of our being. And this is our spiritual self. This spiritual self is where we are deeply united with God who is present to us personally. We could say that it is at this level and depth of our being that we are more fully in touch with God. At this deepest level of our being, in a very distinct and primary way, we discover our true and authentic self. This deepest and purer self is also where we experience in a very real way our true identity as a son or daughter of God who is truly loved by Him. When we are in touch with God at this spiritual level, these moments of union with God are what St. Ignatius would call spiritual consolations. And it follows correctly then that it is during such moments of spiritual consolations that we are enlightened by what God's will and ways are for us. Before we reflect further into the meaning of spiritual consolations, let us recall and not forget that Jackie's desperate situation can also experience a reversal, for example. It is possible, too, that when Jackie's close friend, a medical doctor, calls her up, she could be telling her the good news that the medical report shows that she is cleared of all cancer cells. And upon returning home, Jackie could find out that one of her daughters has been awarded the big scholarship grant as she has stopped her school examinations. On the next day at work, her boss now discovers the truth of how hard she had worked and expresses his apologies for having treated her so badly because he had been fed with lies by another staff whom he had trusted. As a result, Jackie is replacing this staff who has been fired and is given a promotion with a high increase in her salary and the like. My sisters and brothers in Christ, such a happy reversal of events and situation in our lives are not impossible. Jackie, however, could take it as a lucky turn of events if she does not believe in God. But she would do very well if she is to try to live a more discerning life and discover how God is in fact giving her all these blessings and answering her prayers in her needs. These two are what we call God's gift of spiritual consolations. I'm afraid we have run out of time. And so thank you for joining and participating in our series. And I look forward to having you in part 17 of our series, where we will look more fully into the meaning of spiritual consolations. Thank you and God bless you.
Lord Jesus Christ, present before us physically and truly in the Blessed Sacrament, we ask you to give us the needed wisdom so that we will be able to live your Father's will with greater fidelity, with greater courage, and with greater wisdom. And so we pray that you will give us the grace to live your Father's will with greater generosity of heart as we say. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing I do your most holy will. Amen.
Come. Um.